In this episode of Testing All The Things, we're going to start looking at test doubles in Go. Hi, I'm Mark Bradley and welcome to Testing All The Things, a screencast in which we use live coding to demonstrate different types of testing tools and techniques. So far in our Go testing videos, we have only written tests for code that don't require any dependencies. In the next few videos, we're going to look at different types of test doubles we can use to replace dependencies to give ourselves control over our tests and isolate them from each other. In this video, we're going to look at the simplest types of test double. We're going to look at dummies and stubs. Let's look at the code. The application we're going to make over the next couple of videos it's going to be a driving license number generator. We're going to create a very small application and we're going to make use of all the different types of test double. Some of the examples are very contrived to keep the application as simple as possible, but also allow me to demonstrate the different types of test double. In this first video, we're going to look at the test doubles dummy and stub. We're not actually going to use the dummy test double in this video. We're just going to talk about it. So the dummy is the simplest form of test double. It does just enough to implement the interface that it's doubling. I'll show you an example of a dummy as we make a start on this application, but we won't use it, we'll move on to making a stub. So the functionality we're gonna to add to our driving license number generator today will be handling a case when an applicant is too young to be generated a driving license number, or the applicant already has a driving license, so cannot have a second. Let's make a start on writing this code. So we're going to be using, we're going to be using Testify to give us test suites and to do assertions against. But in these videos, we will not be using its mocking functionality or its test double functionality. We'll just be hand coding our own test doubles. Let's make a start. We'll create our first test. We're going to test uh, underage applicant. At this point, need an interface to implement against. So we can create this over here in our implementation file. So type applicant is an interface and for today, we're going to create two functions on our interface. So the first one is is over 17. That returns boolean. That's for our first test. And the other test is holds license. That also returns a boolean. So that's our application. App so that's our applicant interface as it stands. We will be adding to this over the next few videos. But for these tests, we don't really care what structure holds, implements this interface. All we care about is that our test doubles implement it. So now we have our applicant interface. Now we need an underaged applicant. So we can create one of those here. We can get that to. Creating our underage applicant. Now, if we do option enter, we can get it to implement the interface for us. So we can just do applicant. Applicant, okay. And it creates everything for us. So now we can make it implement the interface. So is over 18 is false, and holds license is also going to be false. Oh. So this is our stub method. Going back to the dummy, so that if we had some functions here that return strings, 
a dummy would just return an empty string. It would just do enough to make the test pass. Now, when you're doing test first, test driven development, I haven't really come across a good use case for a dummy because usually as soon as you have a dependency, you, you need to start using it. Now, the, the times I've found dummy test doubles, the most useful is when I'm testing code that was not created with tests, when I'm adding tests to a piece of code that's untested. Dummies at that point become very useful because you, you might have a case where you're writing a large number of tests that don't actually get down to touching your test double. So at that point, you don't want to put any effort into the test double. You just want to make sure you can pass it in. You just want to be able to pass it into the constructor or into the function and then just implement the interface so it, can, it compiles, but it doesn't need to be used yet. Another time you want to you might use a dummy is for something like a logger. If you have to pass in some form of a logging thing where you don't really care, you're not interested in, in testing it, kind of looking at what its use. Um, a dummy is another good thing because you can just throw things at your kind of null logger almost and not worry about it. Anyway, back to our stub. So our stub is slightly more advanced, but not much more advanced than a dummy test double. Uh, a stub just returns a hard-coded set of values. At the moment, we only have values that are booleans, but later if we had a function that needed to return a string, we would just hard code the string we wanted returned here and know that whenever we called that function within our code under test, we would get back that exact string. So we have our first stub, our underage applicant stub. And now we can do instance of it. And now we need a, uh, license generator, uh, so we'll go uh, driving oh, uh, new number generator, something like that. If we do do license generator dot uh, generate, Pass in our applicant. Now we know we're going to get an error back, so we'll ignore the first argument and we'll look at the second argument, which is going to be our error. Error. So we expect there to be an error. We're looking for the error, and let's also say we want error to contain uh, under okay. okay so there's our test set up our stub instantiated and we're throwing it into the generate function. So let's start creating some code. So func new number generator okay. so we need number generator So that could just return number generator. Okay, and now our number generator needs a method generate so a, and this is an applicant. It returns a string and an error make the code compile we can return empty string and nil. Okay. So our test now should be in a runnable state. Let's just check that runs and gives us the 
error we expect. The test failed. And it failed because it expected an error, but it got nil. We can solve that, make this test pass by doing errors dot new and let's just say it's broken. Save, run the test. So it's still failing, but now we've got past the fact that there was no error. We're getting an error. And we're now down to line 16 and we're not getting the, the fact that underage should be in the error message. So let's fix that. So un age applicant, you must be 17 for a license. Okay. okay. And now if we run it, Underage. We are success contains. This is the wrong way round. Okay, I had it the wrong way round, but fine. So our test passes. And um, we can now move on to our next test. So as I said previously, the second thing we want to look at testing today is that not only can underage applicants not apply for a license number, but also people that already hold a license can't apply for a second license. Sweet test no second license. Yet again, now we need another stub. So we will create that down here. So this is license holder applicant. And again, we want to implement our applicant interface. So if option enter, implement interface, applicant, and it creates our functions for us. And away we go. So to hold license, you must be over 17. So for this one, we will return true. And you also must already hold license to be our license holder. So return true again. And now we can use our second license holder applicant stub. So we go back to running our test. So applicant is license holder applicant. And we can dab all of this bit again. And And what can we expect in this message? Uh, second, there we go. Well, actually, let's use duplicate. There we go. So if we run this test, we'll run both tests now. Okay. We have a failure. On line 26, underage applicant uh, you must be 17 for a license. Do not complain, contain the word duplicate. So we now need to write a bit more code. We can go into here. We can do something like if applicant dot hold license. Okay, let's fix that typo. 
iPhone out, Shift F6. Uh, what do we do? And all this data. So it holds license. Delete it better. Delete it better. Okay, so we want to return an empty string again. And we want to errors.new. Applicant, uh, you can only hold one license. Something like that. Now, if you run the tests, everything's gone green. Okay. So at the moment, we have a very simple application. We're just catering for some of the error cases, the sad cases of our application. We want to put, so at the moment we've got a guard statement sitting at the top that stops us generating a license for someone that already holds a license. And then at the moment, the default behavior for this application is it assumes you're under it. And that's where we're gonna leave our application for today. So we, we're just making use of our stubs, things that implement the interface and return hard coded values for us so that we can use them and know that they do exactly what we need them to do within our code under test. So we now have two tests that are passing and in the next video, we will continue on our path looking at the next type of test double, which is a spy. I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching this episode of Testing All The Things. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please rate and review the video and subscribe to the channel. If you did not and you have any feedback, please leave a comment in the comment section of the video or contact me on Twitter at Braddle.